Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. A blue, visible mist of God's glory comes into my guests' meetings. One meeting had 3,000 people came to Messiah and 25 deaf and mute people instantly healed. Are you ready for the blue mist? Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Is God ready to bring a tsunami wave of healing onto planet Earth today? Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. I'm here with Tommy Combs. And uh, Tommy, you said something that is music to my ears. You said that the glory of God is here. But I didn't realize that not just the glory of God in the studio right now, but the blue mist is here, yes. and I, I know it. When was the, the first time that you um, saw the glory of God? Uh, at age 10, uh, uh, the doctors had diagnosed uh, with a liver disease that destroyed my liver. And uh, Was that uh, life-threatening? Life-threatening with three or five days to live. Boy, that's life-threatening. Life-threatening. Uh, and on Sunday morning, the blue mist, my mother was praying, my grandmother was praying for me, the blue mist rolled into my hospital room rolled into the room, yeah, so powerful, the, so powerful, knocked my mother to the floor on one side, knocked my grandmother to the floor on the other side, out in the Holy Ghost, as I would say, out in the Holy Ghost of God, and Jesus walked right up to my bed. I'm, he came out of the blue mist, walked right up in the smoke. Wait, were you afraid? I mean, you're a young kid. You're dying. I'm setting up. A 10-year-old sat in the bed looking up, and there's Jesus in front of me that I've been taught all my life about Jesus. Now I'm looking right at him. Beautiful eyes, beautiful. Uh, and I received a brand new liver in one second by the power of God. Give God praise. Hallelujah. And then yeah. at 14, your entire life changed. What happened? At 14, uh, in, a, in a small church service, about 80 people in our local church, and my dad and, uh, and some other men uh, would come into the church and sit there, and they were coal miners from uh, Walker County, Alabama, in the coal mining business, and the blue mist rolled in at the end of the service, in the altar service, when the, when the man of God made the call for salvation. The blue mist came in the altar. Yeah, you realize, as you're saying this, I can feel the presence of God increasing yeah. as He's talking. And People would get, come to the altar, raise their hands in the blue mist, fall under the power of the Holy Ghost. People were healed, people were delivered, people were saved. But the main thing that happened, my dad walked down that altar crying and said, Save me, Jesus, and gave his life to Jesus Christ when the blue mist came. When an encounter with God changes everything in your life when, when we get in that glory presence of God. You like to teach on what the scriptures, especially the Old Covenant, have to say about the glory. Pull out a couple, a few. I start with Adam. Adam, every afternoon, Adam would uh, would get in God's presence. The glory, the glory was there in the garden, and Adam. Then we go seven, seven men from Adam was a man named Enoch. Enoch got so much glory of God, he just walked into heaven, just walked with God, and God took him. Enoch. And Moses is the man. I mean, Moses was the man. It, Moses uh, was in God's presence. His skin was actually penetrated. You know, they had to put the, put the shield over his face with a, with a cloth. The glory of God was so strong on the day that Solomon dedicated the temple that the priests could not stand, the musicians could not stand. I'm telling you, that is going to happen again. It's going to happen again. We're going to see it big time happening when 
Everyone in the glory is in the presence of God. Peter in the glory of God. I want so much power on me and you and this audience and everyone watching us today that the glory of God comes so strong that we just pass by people and get healed. Like Peter Shadda. You know what? I don't see it happening now, but it's as real to me as if it's happening right now. But tell me about that meeting you had in Bolivia. We were in Bolivia and uh, a small congregation of about 80 people. And uh, we was having a great worship service. And then the blue mist came in, like the smoke, the Shekinah glory, as I call it. The smoke came into the room. And God said, you want to see a double portion? I said, yes, sir, I'd love to see a double portion. Yeah, anything you want, God, I'm with you. Come on, <laughs> show it to me. And the blue mist rolled in the congregation. Everybody went out, Sid. Everybody. When Listen, you say went out, people uh, don't understand that Okay, word. let me explain. explain. That's, a, that's a good term for me. Everybody fell under the power of God in the blue mist. Three-year-old children fell under the power of God, and 80-year-old women fell under the power of God. Everybody in God's presence prostrate on the floor worshiping God because the blue mist came in. That's the most powerful scene I've ever seen where the whole church and that's going to also happen where we see whole congregations in our churches, in our, in our synagogues, and everywhere when the blue mist comes, it's just going to change people's life by mass numbers. Not three or four of us, but mass numbers are going to be changed. Oh, you know, these big football stadiums, they weren't made for football. You know what they were made for? The <laughs> glory right, of God. The glory of God. <laughs> but, but uh, Tommy... You said expectancy is very important. you got to expect the glory. By faith we are saved. By faith we accept Jesus Christ. But we have also, by faith, got to expect the glory. We've got to expect it. That's number one. You've got to expect it. Well, I can tell you that I'm good on. I expect every meeting I have that glory to show up. And when we expect the glory, we got to be like Moses. Moses said, God, show me your glory. I can't, Moses, it'll kill you. Moses didn't stop. You know what he said? God, I want to see your glory. Moses, I can't show you my glory. It's going to kill you. You know what he said? God, show me your glory. <laughs> he said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you, Moses. I'm going to let you put your face in a rock and I'm going to walk behind you. Moses, I use the word peek out, okay? Moses face in the rock. He looks like this. God walks behind him. He sees the glory of God so strong that he writes the first five books of our Bible. He saw the history of God. The Bible says he saw the backside of God. The, he saw the hinder parts of God. No, no, he saw the history of God. God showed him the history when Moses walked by him. He saw the history of God. Moses was a man, I'm telling you. He, and that kind of, we have to be persistent like Moses was persistent. God, show me your glory. I'm expecting. I'll tell you what, Tommy receives a word from God about the greater glory and the type of miracles that we're going to see. I'm expecting them on this show. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! Turn to It's Supernatural. Tommy, the, 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 this greater glory, I've been using this term for a long time, and you use this term, but it's actually in the Bible, the greater glory. Tell me about it. The latter house will be greater than the former house. The glory is going to come like we've never seen before. Now, We've had people say, it's going to be accumulation of everything we've seen in the past. I've heard it's, people, people say, say that. that. No, I no, don't agree no, either. No. It's, it's going to be greater than that. I'm talking about it's going to be the, the greatest glory move that we've ever seen when God's presence just shows up. You say the glory is greater than even healing. Greater. The miracles will be just... I, you, you and I have talked before about popcorn miracles, where they're yes. miracle, 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 miracle. That's what's going to what, what I'm talking about. We're talking about people coming in to 
the presence of God in such a strong way. And I'm talking about the presence of God in your home, the presence of God at your workplace, the presence of God in our churches, the presence of God in our businesses. The presence of God is so strong that when people are attracted to that, you're walking down the street and the presence of God attracts people and they go, what is it you have? What is it? Tell me about what you have. What, what is it? They, they fall their knees and cry and say, well, there's something about you I want to know about. That's what I'm talking about. The present glory is going to be so strong. Now, you talk about something I don't hear too many people talk about, but there are literally portals, or like uh, Jacob had the, the, the ladder uh, that yes. go from heaven to earth, the angels come up and down, but they are breaking out in churches and homes. And uh, you were telling me about the one you went to in Moravian Falls. Yes, I'm preaching up Do there at the Gathering Church. The greater glory here. And angels walking on the stage, walking on the stage behind me in the crowd. I'm thinking, boy, they're getting this. And Tommy, you're doing real good. Now they're seeing the angels. They're seeing the angels back here. That's what they're seeing there. They're all excited about the angels. But in that service, a lady drove down from New Jersey, brought her husband who had a brain bleed and a tumor on the brain. She brought him to, the, to be healed. At the end of the service, I began to pray for people to be healed. She brought him down. Her, their daughter, 22 years old, went away from God now many years. Didn't want anything to do with church, but she drove mom and daddy to the meeting. So she's there and God healed him. God healed the man of a brain bleed and a tumor on the brain. There was so much glory and so much power in that situation around that meeting that night. This girl goes back home, falls on her knees, accepts Jesus Christ as her Savior. This girl has the number one healing ministry in the state of New Jersey right now because the glory came on the scene. It's so important. This is what I believe, Tommy. This glory will be a two-edged sword. If you repent of your sins, it'll be the greatest thing that ever happened to you. But if you hold on to those old habits, it'll be the worst thing that ever happened to you. Tell me about when the Israelis invaded and took over the Canaanite homes. What did they find in the walls? They, God said, you will have houses you didn't build. That's what He told them, told the people. Right. They prophesied. go across the Jordan, they take houses that they did not build. The enemy knew they were coming, so the enemy put idols in the walls hmm. and hid idols in the walls of those houses. The priest told them, clean the house. And they would bring the priest in and clean the house. And if they didn't get the idols completely out of the house, the house was torn down to re rebuild. And they found the idols in the walls. God wants a clean house. God wants a clean house in me. God wants a clean house in you, but He also wants our home to be pure. What he wants our homes to be. But the way you do it, and you said the word, the blood. When is the last time you go through your home pleading the blood of Jesus? When's the last time you went through your home praying in that beautiful prayer language, what, that what heavenly mean, language? What do you mean by pleading the blood of Jesus? Jesus said, use my name and plead my blood. But I plead the blood, you say, I plead the blood of Jesus. You speak it. You speak it like I pray the blood. I plead the blood. I, I'm asking the blood to come on the scene. God moves on faith. Satan moves on fear. You've got to move that fear out of your life and get the blood to move for you. The glory, when you get in the blood scene, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood, oh God, I feel it now, the blood of Jesus, then the glory loves that. The it glory attracts. of God, it attracts the, the blood, blood, attracts the Tommy, glory. The blood attracts the glory. The Idols attract the demonic. Right. My mother didn't raise a dummy. Who wants the demonic in my home? When we return, I'm going to ask Tommy to reveal his secrets and pray that the glory of God overtakes you. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! Tell me about your meeting in Angola. Uh, Angola, Africa, three night meeting, 50,000 in the audience, 50,000 showed up in the meeting. The glory mist rolled over the meeting. 
it was like a smoke, a campfire, but we had no campfires, but there was like campfires and the smoke was all over the crowd. I made the altar call and 12,000 came out of that 50,000, 12,000 saved in that night. During that meeting, there were so many miracles where you mentioned it earlier about the 25 deaf and dumb. They, they were just instantly healed. And let me tell you what they said. They had never heard any language, never heard any language. So when I spoke to them and said, say Jesus, they said Jesus in Alabama English because they never heard it anywhere else. <laughs> but the glory and the demons would run. They were demons running, running, running out of the field. We had a large ball field type, and the demons would run. Well, they're, they're, now, did you see this? What do you mean the demons would run? The people possessed of the enemy, possessed of the devil, would come up on the scene, and the mist would surround them, the glory mist, and they would turn and run, and run out of the area, run out of the air, screaming, screaming, holding their ears and screaming. That's what the power of God does. It runs the enemy out of your life. It runs the enemy you know, out of your life. Tommy, I believe when that glory comes at, at full level, we're not going to have to deal with sickness. No. We're not going to have to deal with demons. No. We're not going to have to deal with problems. Uh, the only problem we're going to have is we will have an insatiable hunger for God. Yes. And it, it, it'll, until we get to heaven, it won't be totally fulfilled. But it's going to be really close with this glory, this greater glory. We need to create what I call a throne zone. A throne zone. A throne zone in your home. A throne zone that we can worship God in that throne zone. Get you a good CD player. Get you some good music on the air. So you create that atmosphere for worship. Get the atmosphere for worship going on. And then plead the blood of Jesus. Pray. Pray like you've never prayed before. The prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Get you, know, you talked line. about praying in uh, tongues, yes. in supernatural language. Pray in your language. Pray in tongues. Pray in your supernatural prayer language because you're communicating with God and God's communicating back. Sometimes we need to not pray and listen to what God's got to say sometimes. That's part of prayer also. But when we create that throne zone, it's like the high priest going behind the last veil and going into the throne zone, if you will. And there is the glory. The glory was there when he got that. That's what we've got to do. Create this throne zone. And then here here comes your children, here comes your grandchildren, here comes your spouse in the house. And the glory of God has penetrated the house. The, the glory of God has penetrated so much. They come in the house. They, their lives are changed. Their lives are changed. Children are saved. Grandchildren are saved simply because you've created a throne zone and attracted the glory by pleading the blood of Jesus and praying. That creates the throne zone. I want you to declare right now yes. the blood of and the glory on everyone viewing us or in the studio audience. Lord, I come to you today and I thank you and I praise you for everything we have or ever hope to have. But most of all, God in heaven, Father God, I thank you for sending Jesus to us. Jesus, we thank you for doing your assignment and Holy Ghost, we thank you for being right now. God, I declare the glory of God comes to all of us. The glory of God in so much measure that no man can count it, that no one can understand it. What has happening when the glory of God? God, I plead the blood of Jesus right now over everyone watching, over everyone in the studio, everyone here. God, I declare this place, this Sid Ross studio as a presence and an open portal for God. From this day forward, an open presence of God rules this place. It, it takes over. As the audience comes in, they're healed. The presence of God flows and His presence of God flowing today right into you. Say, I receive it now in the name of Jesus. I receive it now in Jesus' name and it's done. I expect the glory. Come on, say it. I expect the glory. And it's happening now in Jesus' name. Hey, give God some glory. Give God some glory. I praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. And in the glory, it is breakthrough in you having your own experiential knowledge of God. And the glory of God is here. 
The glory of God is here to heal you, to fill you with His Spirit, speaking in supernatural languages, and to live inside of Him and you and have that own encounter, that own experience with God. Not someone else's, not Tommy's, not mine, yours. Yes. I want you to repeat this prayer after me out loud and, and mean it to the best of your ability. Dear God, Dear God. I've made many mistakes. I've made many mistakes. I'm truly sorry. I'm truly sorry. I believe, I believe the, blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus removes every mistake I've ever made. Removes every mistake I've ever made. I am clean. I am clean. Oh God, oh God, now that I'm clean, now that I'm clean come, inside of me, come inside of me. Take over my life. Take over my life. I make you my Lord. I make you my Lord. Get ready for the glory of God to overtake you.